Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're meeting the Sarabi. He's huge, he's powerful, he fights wolves and he's super rare. Today Animal Watch meets our latest flock guardian, often referred to as the Persian Mastiff, used to defend flocks against wolves and bears, as well as dog fighting in their country of origin. These giant dogs mean business as they are tough as nails. And what's even more exciting is that these are the only two in the whole of the United Kingdom. So this is a super Animal Watch exclusive as we are the only channel to have been granted access to these two precious dogs. Do you think they are better than our other wolf defenders we have featured before? Stay tuned to find out. The Sarabi dog, also known as the Persian Mastiff, the Iranian Mastiff or the Sarabi Mastiff, is a large breed of livestock guardian dog from Iran, originating from the Sarab country. Sarabi dogs have been used for centuries by local shepherds to protect herds of sheep and goats from bears, wolves, jackals and other predators. They have been described as being able to take a wolf down while working as a pack. The Persian Mastiff is calm, controlled, independent, powerful and protective and is often used in staged dog fights in their country of origin so dog breeders and owners can compare the fierceness and toughness of their stock. The breed is considered to be one of the oldest and most powerful indigenous dog breeds in Iran. The larger and heavier an individual dog is, the greater its value. But sadly, he is dying out. This ancient and pure breed is falling victim to the dog fighting rings, who are now mixing larger, more ferocious mastiff types into them in order to increase their size and power, thus gradually diluting their ancient pure genetics. It can be hard to find a pure blood Sarabi now, so this is why it's so exciting for Animal Watch to have been invited to meet the only two to exist in the United Kingdom. So why us? Well, we care about dog welfare here at Animal Watch and how dog breeds are depicted. Owner Lee and Liz are extreme animal lovers and have huge hearts. Their kennels called Unique Guardians are home to several flock guardian dog breeds as well as a menagerie of sheep, alpacas and chickens. Their vision is to create a peaceful sanctuary where children can meet dogs in a natural working environment. They understand that these dogs are exploited in their home countries in dog fighting and feel that it has distracted people away from why they were originally created as a loyal protector and guardian to livestock in desolate and challenging environments. In fact, sadly, this dog breed has been exploited to the point of possible extinction, which means that the pure Sarabi may soon only be a memory from the past. Hello, hi, how are you? I'm Annika. Hi, Annika, I'm Lee. Nice to meet you yeah. and welcome to Unique Guardian Kennels. Fantastic, it's like a proper farm. Yeah, we're, we're very lucky, very privileged to have the, the two, only two Sarabi Mastiffs in the UK. The only two only in two. the whole of the UK? Yeah, and we try to keep them functional and working every day. Would you like to pop in and see them? I would love to. I've never actually seen Flock Guardians in with a sheep, so this is very exciting to Perfect. Me. This big boy is called Gara. Okay. He's a 12-month-old uh, male. He's huge for 12 months. Is he going to get much bigger than that? Yes, he'll probably max out around 70, 75 kilos. Wow. Um, and <laughs> this little sweetheart is after your treats. She's after my treats. She's called Integra. Integra, you are so beautiful. And again, she's she's 12 months old as well. I love the little dew claws hanging off yeah, their the back rear, legs back to get the they're so good looking. And the sheep are like, these are our guardians. Look at this. I've never seen this before, the interaction. I find it's totally fascinating. Yeah, and it's so natural to them. Um, naturally, they, they, won't, they won't do anything to the sheep. They're there to protect them. They work around oh. them every single day and they're, they're, they're comfortable. 
beautiful to see the dogs interacting with the livestock and how brilliantly they get along. I'm told that the sheep actually boss the dogs around, which is something I never knew. Well, I'm here with Lee of Unique Guardians UK and it's fantastic. Look what we've got here. We have got an incredibly rare dog breed. So tell us, what is this dog called? Um, the breed is a, is a Sarabi Mastiff, um, also known as a Mirage dog and it's from um, Iran, its native country is Iran. And these are the only two Sarabi in the whole of the UK. Back in Iran, there's very few true 100% pure mi Mirage Sarabi dogs, sadly being crossbred now for fighting. I just want to say that on Animal Watch, we don't promote dog fighting. We're just basically informing you of where these dogs come from. Sadly, in the native country, it's relatively poor. And the way that the farmers can make additional money is through the blood sport of dog mm. fighting, which Obviously, I don't, I don't promote it, don't agree with, and it's not something that we, we condone. So the amazing thing, obviously, is your two dogs really prove it's how you raise the dog, because they've come from fighting line, but they get on with all your other dogs amazingly well in a fantastic pack. And I think it's all about being a responsible owner. That's what we try to portray. We try to promote functionality and versatility within our pack. All our dogs are around the livestock every day and work part as a pack. Our farm is to give the dogs the opportunity to be seen in a positive light. We're trying to create super versatile dogs and come away from the rhetoric of the dogs that you see on, sadly, on chains, barking, showing aggression. We want, we want them to be seen off lead around livestock and working every day. They are so friendly. I mean, you invited us in and they could see that we were friendly and yeah. then they were then fine with us. If it was a burglar and somebody was to come onto your land and you were not there to say that he was okay, what would these dogs do? They protect, they guard, they guard the land. Each dog has a different area and they know the position. We have three, three elements of the dogs. The runs with no animals in, where the dogs are allowed to express themselves and play. Then we have working with the livestock, where they've got to be calm calculated and relaxed. Then we have them as family pets, yeah. where ultimately that's what they are as well. They're here to be cuddled and, and loved as when, well. When they're puppies, do they just naturally um, become very nurturing to the livestock or do they have to be taught to be nurturing? Naturally nurturing. Now what we do here is we, we encourage a bigger dog to show them the ropes. Ultimately they go in with a bigger dog that's, that's established around the livestock and it shows them right from wrong. Because as puppies they still want to play, they still want to do them things and chasing the livestock and still have some adolescent behaviours. But the big dog soon puts them in the place and shows them that they can't do that in that, in that environment. The real family protectors as well as livestock protectors as well. They have a natural instinct to, to identify good from bad. This is a flock guardian breed. It was bred to be out in absolute acres of wilderness with sheep yeah. or livestock. You're giving them that here in the UK and it's making them incredibly happy and fulfilled. What do you say to somebody that would be interested in having a dog like this and they wanted to put it in a small house with a tiny garden? Ultimately, it's not suitable. My first thing, my first mantra is to say, I always try and talk people out of a livestock guardian dog because it's a very small percentage that can actually own them. So if I can talk you out of the dog, the dog's not possibly for you. Maybe readdress what dog you want. Your male is very big. If somebody was to have him as a pet, what would happen in the house when they brought a puppy like this home? What would it do? Would it be destructive? Would it be lively? It would be lively. It'd be destructive and lively. Ultimately, they require a lot of stimulus. They'll be at the windows, they'll be looking out, they'll, they, they want to see what's going on and around probably them. quite noisy. If you were to take him on a lead now and we were to go out onto the street, how would his behaviour be different to running around on, on his own land? He'd change, he becomes alert, he becomes more reactive to things outside and when he's out walking in the community. Because it's something we don't do very often as well, very privileged that he's on the farm and he's working every day. He's not really out in the community. So when he is out in the community, he's switched on, he's super alert. So you, would you say he's guarding you? He's pretty much, yeah. He won't let very much near you. Okay, so if a person comes near, he could be reactive? He, yeah, he'll give them warning bark straight away. He'll pull towards them. He'll show, he'll show that he's not happy with somebody and walking And how about a dog? A dog, he'll be super aggressive. Again. Really? So how big do you think he's going to be in weight? and height roughly, do he'll you know? Be, he'll be around 85 centimetres to the shoulder in height when fully growing and around 80 kilograms, I guess. That's that's really heavy because that's about double my uh, wolf dog. Yeah. And as you can see, the females are quite smaller than the males, aren't they? Yes. They, they look very feminine. The males look very masculine yeah. and big. Nature has shaped these dogs, you know, up to now. Yeah. So they've lived in harsh environments, in the deserts, in the mountains, where 
illness has killed them off. Everything has killed them off. You're, you're left with the fittest and the most healthy. Yeah. So they always usually have a very good life and expectancy. A yeah, a true Mirage dog, a true Sarabi dog, between 12 and 15 years, they say they're, they're untouched. They're... The Great Dane, another very, very large Mastiff. So they've got the gigantic gene. It makes them very ill. They die young. These dogs are like naturally occurring giant breeds. Yeah. It's just like you couldn't get a more healthy large dog if you tried. I would say out of all the flock guardians we filmed today, you've got the best set up I've ever seen and, and presented on Animal Watch. If you want one of these dogs, honestly, please, please, please just don't go and get one just because you fancy it. You need to have a huge amount of land like this. It's got to be fenced. They're going to get out. They're going to defend the land. They're going to run down the perimeter making a lot of noise. Very sweet with their family members, but the moment they're on the lead, they start guarding. This is not an animal you can get and stick in a tiny house and then just go to work for the day. That would be incredibly irresponsible. You may end up having your dog euthanized for something terrible that might happen. In conclusion, the Sarabi is most definitely the friendliest and most lovable of all the flock guardians I have met and will give you direct eye contact. Many flock guardians are so fixated on the garden perimeter that they won't look you in the eye. However, it must be remembered that these dogs are extremely dominant and that they originate from dog fighting lines. And because of this, they might be dog aggressive to dogs of the same sex as they mature. It was very evident that during filming, the male Sarabi fancied his chances with Lee's older Brindle Central Asian Shepherd male, and they had to be watched very carefully when they interacted. It was also evident that they were extremely prey driven, as there was one accident when a cockerel escaped his enclosure and wandered into the field where we were filming. He was quickly chased and almost caught by the male Sarabi due to his independent streak. He could not be called off, but the cockerel was saved, so don't worry. So remember, if you want one, please understand that dogs of the same sex most probably cannot live together as adults. You must give them a huge piece of land to protect so they feel fulfilled. They might attack your smaller pets and they will be challenging to other dogs in public. So on leash walking and possibly isolated walking is a necessity. If you feel you are strong enough for one of these dogs, as they are powerful, then they are extremely loving to their human family, especially kids. So be prepared for sheds loads of kisses and fun. And finally, good luck in getting a pure one out of Iran, as it's going to be almost impossible. I'll definitely be asking for that DNA test before investing in one, as it's so rare. And it's so rare. I couldn't find any footage on the internet of one challenging a wolf. So its ability to kill a wolf seems to be on word of mouth only. Um, so what is your account that people can like, maybe if they want to just look at your photos of your dogs or videos, where, where, where should they go to have a look? Our Instagram account is called Unique Guardians UK. You can find out any information on the Sarabi. You can drop me a message whenever you feel like you need any information around the breed, but don't just go out and, and think that this breed's for you without actually speaking no, to people. No, they're probably going to be one of the most challenging dog breeds in the world, so just don't go and get one. Our Instagram's always open and we're always speaking to people every day and trying to support people in the right, getting the right dog for the right family. There's regular updates of the dogs. You can see them from when they arrived into the UK up until now, 12 months old. Lee's very experienced. He's got Kangles, he's got Caucasian Shepherds, he's got an essential Asian yeah. Shepherd. So he's got a huge amount of knowledge when it comes to flock guardians in general. And if you enjoyed this amazing episode of Animal Watch, then be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner. And be sure to tune in every week where we'll be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. Bye for now. Bye bye. Mm. Oh.